Now, adjust the volume control so that the sound can be heard in all parts of the room. This is the Protect Your Assets podcast. You get the idea? Bring me a dream. It's on the internet. Make him the cutest that I've ever seen. Go on. Give him two lips. Like it's like no cheese I've ever tasted. And tell him that it's lost Here's the Sandman. Over Sandman. If you're on Medicare, or you will be soon, then you're definitely going to want to stick with us today. Because we're going to help you save possibly thousands of dollars on your health care as we share Medicare Made Easy, how to get the best health care in 2022 and beyond. Good morning. Welcome to Protect Your Assets. I'm David Hollander, your host. It's so great to be with you this morning on this uh, frigid Bay Area morning. Sun will come out. Rain's gone. So wake up. For those of you just joining us for the first time, welcome. People around here, they call me the Sandman, and that's because I help my listeners sleep well at night by answering their most troubled legal or financial questions each week. We have a tremendous show for you today. There's one common thread with virtually every client I'm meeting with these days. It's almost like a widespread panic. And if it's not a concern of yours right now, well, I can assure you it soon will be. So what's the number one thing that could put a serious dent in your retirement nest egg? That's right. It's the skyrocketing, inflation-packed cost of health care. Right now, clients are coming to us in droves with one of two different scenarios. One. They've received a health insurance premium increase of somewhere between, get this, 25 and 50 percent. Or two, they've been handed a letter that says, sorry, we're not renewing your policy. That's it, period. Have a nice day. (laughs) Wow. So you combine one of these two scenarios with the recent research study. That's projecting a typical 65-year-old couple will pay a little over $600,000. You heard me right, 600 k in retirement just to cover your health care expenses. And you've got a perfect storm. This is not a political conversation. Nobody's going to take sides on this one. The health insurance companies are blind to us. They just want our money. So... <laughs> This is a huge financial hurdle that everyone's going to face, including you. And if it's not a concern of yours right now, well, it should be. Because if you're getting ready for retirement or you're in retirement, then right now you've got a window of opportunity that's going to close on December 7th. So today we're going to talk about that. What kind of choices you can make right now? What should you be looking at? What should you be thinking about? You could possibly save thousands of dollars just by listening to the show today as we talk about how to get the best health care in 2022 and beyond. So stick around. Now, let's get started. Well, this was a fascinating week again in the market. Wasn't too bad overall. The Dow was down 1.4%, but the S&P squeaked out a profit up 0.3%. NASDAQ, a little bit of fire going up 1.2%. Ten-year treasury sitting right around 1.54, and oil at $75.67 a barrel. So last week, it was funny. We were sitting here talking about inflation, and then I started watching the shows I usually watch on uh, Sunday morning, and I kid you not, every single show was about inflation, And then I started getting the calls this week. Oh, is inflation here to stay? Is it over 5%? What's going on with inflation? All right. Well, I'm glad you tuned in this morning because there are three things that I look at every month and that we share with you to actually understand inflation. So is it here to stay or is it transitory? That's the question. And... Although inflation's been all over the media lately, there's a couple things you need to know to know if it's going to stay for a while, which really wouldn't be that great for the market. So the first thing that we look at is the five-year tips. 
No, I didn't say what you think I said. TIP stands for Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. Yeah, baby. (laughs) Gave you back your mojo, didn't I? Five-year tips break evens right now. Uh, The bond market's estimation of annual inflation over the next five years. For this to ring alarm bells in my mind, I want to see that over 3% for multiple, not just one, multiple months. So the update for November is, yep, all that information we got last week, it broke the 3% level just last week as you probably heard about. And that was driven by surging energy prices. But as you know, because I just told you, the energy market space has pulled back a little bit this week. Price of oil, 75.67, down from the mid-80s. So that indicator is mainly driven by commodities like the price of oil. And so in order for me to get concerned and to ring my buzzer, and then I'll share that with you, of course, Well, I'm going to need to see that stay above 3% for several more months, and then we'll have a discussion because in my mind, the Fed will start raising rates sooner than later, which will certainly rain on the stock market, period, end of story. So right now, it's too early. The next indicator that we look at each month is the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Inflation expectation over one year and five year. Now, again, for this one to ring an alarm bell, I need to see that move above three and a half percent for several months in a row. And yes, again, last month, which was just reported recently, that number got to almost five percent. Yeah. So that's a big one. And that's shocking. And given that is historic, It's going to have to stay there for a number of months for me to get concerned. Right now, I'm looking at it. It's interesting, but it's not over, okay? And the next one we look at is the same University of Michigan consumer, da-da-da-da, but it's the five-year number. And this, in my mind, is the most important metric right now that we look at in this data set because if consumers start to think that higher inflation is going to last for multiple year periods, then that's what's going to make the Fed take notice and again, start to raise rates more sharply than what the market's pricing in right now. Because as you know, they've been very clear or trying to be clear about telegraphing what they're going to do. So again, for that one to ring a bell, I need to see that number above 3% for again, multiple months. The update for November, well, we just came in at 2.9%. So we're not even there yet. We're getting close, but we're not there. So again, with that indicator, inflation pressures right now are high, no doubt about it. But inflation really only matters to the markets right now if the Fed becomes more hawkish. And despite high inflation expectations right now, short term, there's really nothing that's telling me inflation is accelerating materially from where we are or that the Fed's going to make any moves right now because of the information. It's that simple. So you want to maintain your your, uh, tactical asset strategy in resources, cyclicals, value, banks, things like that. Now, turning to the economy this week, the, uh, the big indicator I was looking at was the manufacturing. And as you can imagine, manufacturers are producing at all-time levels. Their problem is they can't get supplies. All those container ships out there, you see all the supplies sitting out there. They're just trying to make stuff, but they don't have the goods to, to make it. So they're doing the best they can. Well, the Empire State Manufacturing Index, was a, it's an a East Coast uh, productivity number. That hit an all-time high this past week, 50.8. was up 7.3%. So that was big. And when you look at prices, this was uh, almost a record, 83. So, So bottom line, the East Coast implied that there is 
a continued economic reflation going on right now. There's strong activity that uh, inflationary pressures are there, sure. But uh, overall, the recovery right now is strong. The market's strong. And as you think about the next six months, long, as long as the Fed just keeps their control over the, the picture there, then we're doing okay. We're doing okay overall. So that, that's what it's saying. And we just got to keep our eye on it, as you know, we will. Now, what you have to keep your eye on are bond yields right now. And so, as I told you at the market segment, the 10-year right now is at a 154. And the real big question is, will the Fed get this right or they're going to make a mistake? And we're not going to know the answer to this. You're going to have to be patient. I'm going to tell you right now, for a few weeks, because we have to keep watching that yield curve. And if we make the assumption that inflation is going to stay high for a while, then the Fed's going to have to kill it. And if the market thinks that inflation is going to remain uh, less, more transitory, then the Fed's doing everything just right. And they're going to probably not do much except to continue to talk about it. So that's really the issue right now. We just got to see what they do and how the market reacts. And right now, things overall look pretty good. And that's good news for everybody. So next week, uh, we have Thanksgiving on Thursday. There's not a lot of information coming out. So bottom line, uh, I guess I'll see you next Saturday. But overall, it should be a pretty quiet week as people start to enjoy their families. I hope you do the same. I can't wait. It's one of my favorite nights. I always eat way too much. And as everyone knows, I love sweets. So, gosh, I got to take it easy. But uh, <laughs> I always like to have the little small slices, right? You have a little small pie, piece of pumpkin pie, a little pecan pie. Of course, you have the carrot cake. And my wife makes this persimmon pie that looks absolutely terrible. Sorry. But it is the best thing that you will ever try. It's just that simple. It's delicious. I ask her to make it every year, despite the way everyone goes, that's gross. I say, it's not. Try it. You'll see. <laughs> it's incredible. So, you know, just have a little slice, right? A little slice of each one, and they all add up to one. I mean, that's the way I think about it, so maybe that's true. Coming up next on Protect Your Assets, you could literally save thousands, I'm not kidding, thousands of dollars next year on your health care by making some smart decisions today. Find out what those are and how you can put more money in your pocket and less in the insurance companies. This is Protect Your Assets with David Hollander. That's me. I'm the Sandman. We'll be right back. If you're like most of us, you're constantly on the go these days. If you miss a show, make sure to check out our brand new podcast page. Go to LibertyGroupLLC.com and click on radio. That's LibertyGroupLLC.com. Welcome back. I'm David Hollander, also known as the Sandman, and that's because I help my listeners sleep well at night. I answer their most troubled legal or financial questions every single week. Been running a financial firm for almost 30 years. Did you hear that Social Security is expected to get a boost of about 6% next year? Yeah. For 21, the increase was 1.3%, or about $20 a month. Uh, and for 22, we are looking for rising inflation so much. We were talking about earlier on the show and last week that the expected average increase is going to go up by about $96 a month. And that's about 6.2%. And if that happens, that will be the largest increase we've seen in Social Security since 1983. Speaking of increases, right now, the window for open enrollment for Medicare is open. And this window is going to close December 7th. So right now is the perfect time for you to evaluate whether or not you should change plans. 
And if you're new to Medicare or you're going to be applying for it and having a start in January, then right now you need to get on this. This is your window of opportunity to literally save thousands of dollars. We did this for a client who uh, had a policy that he had had for years and never looked at it. We were able to help him save over $500 a month. So you're talking next year, this couple is going to save about $6,000. And believe me, they're happy. If you missed any of our show today, including my market segment earlier, I was talking about inflation. Inflation has been all over the news lately, and I'm sure it'll be the subject of conversation around the tables this coming week of Thanksgiving. Inflation's just popping up. It's out there. It's happening. If you want to know what's going on with inflation and sound reasonably intelligent at the table, then go to Google right now. Go, hey, Google, talk to protect your assets. And then ask to hear my market segment, where you will hear all the conversation and what you need to know about inflation. Tell a friend. Right now, if you are 65 years or older, you have the chance to switch Medicare plans. But only about 10% of you do, according to AARP. You should be taking advantage of this right now because, like I said, there are huge advantages to getting educated about how these change every year. So I would encourage you on an annual basis to set a reminder that as November rolls around to check your Medicare benefits because you're in a period right now of open enrollment where you can switch from one plan to another and save yourself literally thousands of dollars and even make money if you do it right. So what do you need to know? What sort of questions do you need to ask? Now, I'm going to cover a lot of some highlights today that I see regularly, but I want you to know as I get into this subject that it is very unique. It's very special to you. And you need to answer and ask some of these questions But there may be other things in your life that I'm just not aware of, and maybe you're not aware of yet either, (laughs) but you can ask the question, and then you can try and make a decision based on the information you get back. So the first thing you need to know is that you only have until December 7th to get this done. So I really want you to get on this today, or if you can't, start on Monday. But you want to get into this now if you want to save money next year. So let's review some of the most common things you need to know. Question. These are questions. Have your prescriptions and the cost of those prescriptions changed recently in a, in a, in a negative way? In other words, they've gone up a lot. And if this happens or maybe you were prescribed a new medication or your current medication that you were taking fell out of your plan D. Maybe you're on Medicare with plan D and you were paying a certain amount for your medications. All of a sudden they jump big time. You go, what happened there? Well, that's because maybe in September it fell out of your plan. So if that happened, then that might be a reason to to switch plans or look at new plans. Next question. Do you need surgery and want to have it with a specific doctor. If you suffer or could suffer from cancer or a heart attack, again, that's in your family history, we find that a specialist may be key to your treatment, so you may want to make sure that you're on the original Medicare, we'll call it OM, as opposed to Medicare Advantage, MA, and I'm going to talk about that here later in the show, but that could be better for you, OM, all right? Have you been diagnosed with a chronic condition? A serious medical change should trigger a full review of your Medicare coverage. So make sure that your Medicare that you're on, whether it's OM or MA, will cover your new prescriptions you're going to have to be taking. And you should consider the type of care you're going to need before you make that switch. Is your former employer changing its retiree health benefits in any way? You know that notice. You get some companies 
all of a sudden they're going to save a bunch of money and, yep, you're retired and they stick it to you. So if that's the case or you're unsure, call this number, 855, write this down, 855-798-2627, 855-798-2627 to speak with someone to see whether you fall within a window in which the medical provider cannot deny you based on a pre-existing condition. Are you thinking of spending part of your retirement each year in a different geographical area? I can think of a lot of clients that we work with that they want to spend six months here and six months in Florida or six months in South Carolina. If that's the case, then you may want to consider Medicare Advantage instead of Original Medicare. But know this, if you're thinking of living in Northern California during the spring and you're going to spend summer in Florida or Lake Michigan, then you might want to consider a, a different type of plan. Maybe the original Medicare might make sense because, again, I'll talk about that a little later when it comes to MA, there's certain uh, companies that dominate certain areas. And so if you're going across country, it might not work out so well. Has your doctor dropped out of your network? Well, if you deeply want to stay with your doctor, ask them what they think you should do. And you're going to have to get on the phone now because, again, December 7th is when this is up. You don't want to sacrifice long-term coverage for the sake of short-term satisfaction. Remember that. Your doctor might recommend a colleague who is in your current plan so you don't lose more important long-term benefits. Next, if you're super healthy and rarely need a doctor you might want to look at an MA plan that could save you bunches of money each month and pay for things like your gym. Coming up next, it's time for our popular They Say segment where they say once you turn age 65, Medicare is yours for life and it should cost you the same as everyone else. Is that really true? You'll be surprised at the answer. You're listening to The Sandman on Protect Your Assets. We'll be right back. You know what they say, don't you? You don't stop having fun because you get old. You get old because you stop having fun. And now, back to David Hollander, the Sandman. Welcome back. Welcome back to Protect Your Assets. I am David Hollander, also known around here as the Sandman, and that's because I help my listeners sleep well at night by answering their most troubled legal and financial questions, making sure their financial house is in order. So when bad things happen in the world, which we know they do just about every day, you're ready to go. You're prepared. doesn't bother you one bit. If you're just joining us, we've been talking this morning about Medicare Made Easy because right now the window is open for you to switch plans. And if you're like Bob and Marge who came in, we saved them over $6,000 on the cost of their health care next year. And uh, they feel great because now they've got a plan that is exactly what they need. And they got rid of all that extra stuff that they didn't really need, but they were paying for. So now it's time for one of our fan favorite parts of our show, our They Say segment, where we debunk common myths, half-truths, and sometimes just bad advice that they say. Who are they? What do they know that I don't? And what are they saying this week? There's only one man with all the answers. And here he is, David Hollander, the Sandman. So here's one they say. They say that when you reach age 65, you get Medicare for life and everyone pays the same price. Is that always true? Absolutely not. <laughs> In fact... Uh, if you choose traditional or original Medicare, as we call it, and your income is above a certain threshold, then you're going to pay more 
for your supplemental and your prescription Part D. You get your Medicare A for life, that's true, but the income thresholds for 2022, which haven't been announced yet, uh, can affect you. So if we look at 2021 numbers, if you're single filing and you're making more than 90,000 or married making more than 180,000, there's gonna be surcharges based on your adjusted gross income from two years earlier, which will affect the cost that you're gonna pay for your supplemental plans. It can be anywhere from $200 up to $505 thereabouts a month in additional costs. And so if you fall into this camp, or maybe you're not sure about that, we've got the Medicare Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount, blah, blah, blah. This is form SSA-44, which if you're thinking about leaving your work, you're gonna wanna get a hold of this because this can break down for you what your expenses are gonna be so you'll know what they are before you leave work. Now, when we build financial plans for people, we look at this sort of information and we build that into your monthly costs because after all, cost of healthcare is no joke. It's expensive. You've got mail. We got a question from Marge, just sent this in. My husband claimed his social security benefits at his full retirement age. I have my own work record and would like to claim early to get reduced benefits. Does that mean I will also get reduced survivor benefits if my husband dies before me? Well, Marge, happy Thanksgiving week to you, but you can relax. He can eat all the <clears throat> pie he wants to <laughs> because talking, taking your own benefit early won't lower what's called your survivor benefit. So if unfortunately your husband passes away and you have already reached, say, your FRA, which is between 66 and 67, depending on what year you were born, you can switch to the survivor benefit and receive his full benefit. Now, if he dies before you reach FRA, because I'm not sure how old you are, you can wait and switch once you're old enough to qualify for, again, the full survivor benefit. Now, I know this stuff can be confusing. You're always welcome to give us a call, 866-PROTECT, to see what makes sense. Now, when it comes to signing up and enrolling in Medicare... Right now, you have a window of opportunity that will close on December 7th. And this is not straightforward. Medicare, like many retirement decisions, can, can become confusing fast. So let's walk you through some more things you need to know. If you are already taking Social Security benefits, Marge, like your husband is, he will be automatically enrolled in Medicare Part A, even if he's still working. Now, you can choose to turn down Part B since it has a monthly cost. But if you keep it, that cost will be deducted from the Social Security that he's claimed. Now, through December 7th, if you switch plans or you enroll in a new Medicare plan, then I recommend you look at this right now because the cost will be explain to you, and then also will the benefits and the charges. So the decision you need to make right now is do you go with original Medicare, we'll call it OM, or switch to one of the widely advertised, to see all these actors and folks on TV talking about Medicare Advantage. And can you believe that? Do you remember when President Clinton put Medicare Choice in place almost 25 years ago? Remember that, that big health care bill he got through? That's what this is, Medicare Advantage. And right now, get this, 42% of Medicare recipients are enrolled in MA plans. So that's really gone up a lot. So as you consider whether you should switch from original Medicare and go with Medicare Advantage or back the other way, here are some things you need to know. First, I know the advertising, it's compelling. You have these actors talking about switching, uh, they seem so believable. I used to love to watch that show. And sure, you know, think about it. 
But know this, if you switch to an MA plan, they may pay for things like your gym membership, uh, transportation to the doctor, modifications to your home. That's right, they'll pay for all this stuff. Even carpet cleaning. But of course, the devil is in the details and you need to look at all the pros and the cons of each program to see which is right for you. Now, as I said at the top of the show, this is not meant to be an exhaustive list to this today. It's just meant to highlight some things, get you thinking about some things, and look at your situation. But know this, being in a Medicare Advantage plan is going to be different than being under your original Medicare. So if you're currently enrolled in OM, original Medicare, and you want to see your doctor, you may or may not be able to see that doctor if you switch to MA. Moreover, if you want to see a particular specialist and they're not part of the MA group, then you may have to pay for it out of your own pocket. Currently, this is important, there are five companies in the country that control 77% of the Medicare Advantage marketplace. Now write this down. I didn't know this, now I do. Kaiser only controls 7% of that marketplace. United Healthcare, that's a big one. They control 27% of it. Humana, 18%. Blue Cross Blue Shield, 14%. So remember I talked about the Snow Bunny? Spend some time here and some time there. Maybe that might be a better plan for you. CVS Health, they control 11%. Can you believe that? CVS Health controls more than Kaiser of that share. I didn't know that. The average number of MA plans available to you now, this is the amount of plans out there. There's over 30 of them. Right now, you can get $75 a month towards buying your food. Yeah, they'll just give you 75 bucks as part of the healthy food card, which is part of MA. If you decide to switch from your original Medicare plan to MA, know that it can be very tricky to go back the other way. So just because now you're healthy, it seems like this might be a great idea. If you have cancer, maybe Alzheimer's, certain types of dementia in your family, seriously think about this. Because what may seem great today may be very, very difficult for you and more expensive later. If you're hoping the government's going to take care of your health care and they're going to help you make decisions around what I'm talking about this morning, then I'll tell you this. Hope is not a strategy. You may be saying, I have an advisor. Everything's great. There's no problems. Well, there's no problems until something breaks, right? Uh... (laughs) I was surfing in Hawaii a month ago, and all of a sudden my back decided to give out on me. Well, that's a problem. Has your advisor discussed with you the fact that it's open enrollment Medicare right now, and you have an opportunity? If they haven't, this is not about changing your advisor. It's about becoming more educated, because those who are more educated make better decisions. Coming up next on Protect Your Assets, you need an emergency procedure. Is Original Medicare better than Medicare Advantage? How do the two main forms of Medicare compare and what do you need to know now if you get hit with an emergency? Find out when I come back. It's all coming up next on Protect Your Assets. Keep it right here. You can hear this show, Protect Your Assets, hands-free anytime on your smart speaker or Android device. Just say, hey, Google, ask Protect Your Assets to play the latest podcast. Learn more at libertygroupllc.com slash voice. Now, back to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. We're back. I'm David Hollander, also known as the Sandman, and you're listening to Medicare Made Easy this morning. So if you want to know how to get the best health care in 2022, you only have until December 7th to make that switch. So hopefully this morning you've picked up some good tips. We've got some more for you. If you like this song we're playing, I'm happy to say this is my daughter. My daughter, Jackie Hollander, just released this song yesterday on Spotify. So if you want to listen to it, the full version, go to Spotify and type in Jackie Hollander. 
and you'll hear the new song. All right, so let's say you need an emergency procedure next year, or you're looking at an important surgery that's coming up next year because now the rooms are opening back up again. Should you go with your original Medicare plan that you have right now, or will a Medicare Advantage plan be a better choice for you? Well, here's some things to think about. Under original Medicare, you can go to any emergency room you want to or any doctor you want to see. Under Medicare Advantage, you can get care in any ER, but there may be a copay. The ambulance ride from where the injury occurred to the hospital, that could be free under MA, but it could cost you 20% of the actual cost under OM. With OM, unless you have the proper supplement, you're going to pay a share of the ER visit in each medical service you receive, plus a 20% coinsurance for emergency room doctor fees. With MA, if your doctor determines your procedure is not extremely urgent. Now imagine that, you have an emergency and you want help now and you have to wait until your doctor determines whether it's an extreme, quote, urgency. Hmm. If your doctor doesn't think it's an extreme urgency, then you're going to face higher bills unless you wait to go to a hospital that's within your network. I don't want to do that. Medi-Cal asset test update. Assembly Bill 133. This was signed into law on July 27th, and the state of California will phase in an elimination of the Medi-Cal asset test for all Medi-Cal programs over the next two and a half years. While the state must wait federal approval of implementing its plan, it's expected to happen around July of next year. And at that time, the state will raise the Medi-Cal asset limit for individuals to 130,000, 195,000 for a couple, and 65,000 for each additional family member. No sooner than January 1st, 2024, the state of California is expected to eliminate all Medi-Cal asset tests completely. That's a big deal. So that's a great update. All right. Now I'd like to give a big thanks to the Protect Your Assets team for putting together a great Thanksgiving show today. My executive producer and network manager, Kevin Renfer, and of course, all my fabulous producers right now doing the work behind the scenes. Danny, Phil, Sean, Brett, thank you guys, because without my team, I'm just another pretty voice on the radio. You've been listening to the Protect Your Assets show. I am David Hollander, the Sandman. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving holiday with your family. Get some time off and go out and make the rest of your life the best of your life. Investment advisory services are offered through Liberty Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. The strategies mentioned are not suitable for everyone. The information expressed is not considered your specific situation or objectives and may not be appropriate for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. To better understand the risk associated with investing and how it reacts to different market conditions, listeners should always consult with their qualified investment professionals, financial advisors, legal or tax specialists and conduct their due diligence before making any financial decisions or taking any action. The legal information provided on the air is not intended to substitute for callers hiring their lawyers to advise them about personal legal matters. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Liberty Group LLC paid for the following program and the host's views and opinions do not represent those of the station or its ownership. California Life Agent number 048569. KNBR and Liberty are not affiliated. Persons engaging the services of one affiliate of Liberty Group LLC companies should be aware that each company is operated separately. You're listening to the Protect Your Assets Radio Network.